a few words. Let's welcome back to the third session of the, of the uh, Hong Kong Philatelic Society, Hong Kong Study Circle meeting. Um, next, um, Simon, would you like to uh, share your screen and show a few things? Oh, okay. Right, okay. Okay, um, just uh, show and tell on uh, selected items on the Tim King George the Sixth. Okay, the first one, um, nothing special with this cover. Um, I acquired many, many years ago in, in, in a mixed lot. And, uh, but you know, as a postal history, history collector, instead of a, a stamp collector, uh, when you uh, find a letter, inside cover, then usually you take it out and have a look. And the letter is like this. It mentioned about um, the Chinese character of two. And in fact, that Chinese character is wrongly written according to the writer of the letter. And then I tried to uh, find out whether all the Chinese character two is having a dot or without a dot. <laughs> okay, for the 25 cents, the $2 and this uh, variation of colors, they are having a dot. And according to the Chinese dictionary, it is the correct Chinese character of two. But for the two cents, 20 cents and the uh, different color varieties, they are having a missing dot. <laughs> which should be wrong, according to the Chinese uh, dictionary. Never and uh, for the centenary issue, you can see that they are having the dot. Yeah, um, this is not a flaw because all the stamps are having the same uh, dot or without dot. So I think I'll treat it as just an interesting feature of this thing. Issue. Hmm. Okay, next one. Um, this is uh, uh, called postal stationery with those stamp, uh, postage prepaid receipts um, in 1940 from Kuang Seng Hong um, paying for 264 circulars with uh, two cents each and a total of $4.92. And uh, yeah, this is, um, I, I'll say, a, a, a standard kind of uh, postage prepared receipt prepared by the PPO for, for those pawns or companies uh, who usually uh, post a large amount of uh, uh, circulars. The next one, uh, after the war, um, the resumption of civil service mail uh, was on 1945, October 18, and the initial rate um, was 15 cents per ounce for service to England. And uh, according to Richard uh, in his uh, recent uh, article, uh, the first uh, a steamship should be SS Empire Lagoon. And this is one of the example of the letters carried on that ship to London on the first service mail. The next one is the resumption of civil air mail on October 20th. And the initial rate um, was $1 per half ounce to uh, anywhere. And uh, the carrier should be Royal Air Force because the BOAC route uh, has not resumed it yet. And uh, yeah, according to Richard, uh, that uh, those letters uh, were carried by Royal Air Force to uh, Rangoon, Calcutta, and to UK, I suppose. Only, only to Calcutta. Only to Calcutta, okay. Yeah, yeah. Calcutta okay. to UK was uh, BOAC. Okay, okay. Hmm. Right, and this is the, uh, yeah, the standard $1 rate per half ounce to the, the Empire destination, including Australia. And uh, I suppose uh, it is a, 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 a cooperation between Royal Air Force and Qantas. Am I correct, Richard? 
I uh, oh wow. Um no, it won't be Qantas. Uh I think at that time then the RAF was running a service through Singapore to Australia. Originally, oh, wow. um, wow. it went from Hong Kong through Leyte in the Philippines uh -huh. yeah. to, to Australia. Uh, but that wow. service discontinued, I think, on the 2nd of January, 1946, yeah. when the RAF route went via Singapore. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure in June 46, I think probably it's just RAF the whole way, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh, because according to some documentation by, 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 by Qantas, I, I, if I remember correctly, they, uh, they were operating that, uh, that route already between Australia and UK. But yeah, anyway, I, yeah, I, don't I, mean, have very, I, I think that may very well be the case. Yeah. In which okay. case it went from Singapore to Australia by Qantas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the next one is to USA as, as Richard just mentioned. And uh, yeah, this is uh, on March of 1946. And uh, interestingly, um, it does not uh, has the instructional mark of by air to late only. So uh, yeah, um, according to Richard, the, the, that route while late and the transatlantic route has been seized. Mm -hmm. And uh, counting the, uh, the total value, Frank, on the uh, cover, uh, it is $3.70 and it uh, does not match the $1 per half ounce flat rate from uh, starting from October 1945. And uh, I did some uh, uh, study on, on, on this rate and uh, according to Nick, uh, Nick Hayward's uh, King George the Sixth, uh, the Hong Kong Airmail book, uh, the initial rate uh, was $1 per half ounce. And, uh, <laughs> and also uh, from uh, the examples of some covers uh, for airmails to US, uh, they should be carried by the Royal Air Force to Philippines uh, by air to late only and then uh, service to US and Canada. But that's probably up to end of 1945 or early uh, January of 1946. And, uh, but there is no formal publishing of new rate table prior to the July 26th new table, uh, rate table. And, uh, but there are a few couples recorded uh, going to US uh, since January 1946 uh, with rates other than that $1 rate. And uh, John Tang pointed me to Nick Haywood's uh, update in his article in Hong Kong Studies Circle Journal 317 uh, that uh, sometime in early 1946, uh, it became possible to send mail to North America by air to, by air to London and then by sea at uh, every rate plus a uh, surface letter rate. So, for the previous cover, the three dollars seventy cents, uh, the calculation should be air fee one dollar times three, and then surface rate thirty cents plus fifteen cents, with a total of three dollars forty-five, and then twenty-five cents registration with a total of three dollars seventy. Just made. Is it was the cover to USA? Yes, to USA. Then that's <laughs> correct. The 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 mail sent after uh, the Leyte route closed down is right at the beginning of 1946. Yeah. And uh, Chris Norton was asking me the same questions that you just <laughs> did in the last couple of days. And yeah. the rate to America was not, um, and Canada was not announced or published, sorry. Yeah. But it was $1 or the half ounce, yeah, and then thirty cents for the first ounce, right. and fifteen cents for US, for the yeah. and then for Canada was twenty cents plus right. ten cents service. I I I, I thought the, the the one asking you that question uh, was John Tang. He also asked me. Oh, okay. On because behalf of I was you, asking John, and he <laughs> told me that he, he asked you as well. 
Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and, and then the new yeah, yeah. 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 new rate implemented on July twenty sixth. Uh, 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 clearly published the rate by Air to London. Uh, one dollar twenty, one dollar thirty to Canada uh, or U.S. and then by air to low, uh, two dollar eighty. And this is an example uh, uh, of the new rate by air to London and then service to Argentina uh, with a one dollar thirty cent rate, uh, but it's a double rate. Uh, and then the uh, stamp franc is two dollar sixty. And with the instructional map by air to London only. And I suppose the VOAC Dragon route uh, uh, is, uh, was operating in full already. So uh, yeah, and that uh, cover should be carried by the VOAC to London and then by C route to Argentina. So okay, was this, a, uh, VOAC was only once a week at that stage. So it could have gone by VOAC yeah. or by REF, they worked together. Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Oh, RF was still operating. Still operating to Calcutta, yeah. Okay, okay, good, thanks. And my last item to show uh, is the MF food out to US uh, with London Transit. Uh, this is the USA of the food out rate of uh, um, uh, $2.80 plus 25 cents for registration. And uh, yeah, the, the instructional map by air to USA only, but because the cover was uh, sending to uh, California of USA, so uh, was the instructional map by air to USA only necessary? <laughs> yeah, that's the end of my presentation. And yeah, thank you. Well, very nice. Um, any questions? Yeah, Not a question, um, it's an observation. Oh, sorry, you go ahead, Ingo. Well, I just wanted to make an observation that um, that. Uh, Cover with the, um, the 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 early one from uh, with the um, let me see which one this one the one going to the USA the one okay. going to the yeah that one that one this going one. Um, those one dollar first issue definitives you don't see them very often in 1946 and uh, part of it is because they were um, they were allowed only to be put on mail in 1945 because of the looting of the high values, the $1 uh -huh. value was allowed to be put on in the presence of um, a postal official. And um, you just don't see those stamps used very much, certainly in 1945, but in 46, I don't remember seeing it, those, those two, those uh, $1 first issue stamps in 1946. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, in, in fact, when I was puzzling about the rate, uh, uh, before I asked John Pang or Richard about the, the, the rate, and uh, without the update, uh, without knowing the update by, by, by uh, Nick Hayward uh, on, on the uh, new rate to US. In fact, I, I, I was uh, thinking about uh, whether uh, this cover is a philatelically frank cover, but because it is a registered letter, so I, I suppose the, the sender uh, should be uh, 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 attending the, the, the current post office uh, uh, by person and then um, uh, mail that letter in front of, uh, at, at the counter and with the uh, post office clerk uh, calculating the rate and then uh, uh, accepting the money and, and, and sending and, and then uh, giving the, the sender the stamps and the registration uh, register label to, to put on the, the, the cover. So I, I suppose that all those stamps should, should came from the current post office. That makes my sense. Yeah. Ingo, my understanding is that the post office ran out of $1 stamps in December 45. Yeah, so okay. that, that makes that even more unusual that they have these in, um, in uh, this is March. Yeah. yeah, March forty six. That's that makes it even more interesting. Uh, yeah. I'll check. I'll check out. But uh, but I, off the top of my head, I think that's the case. Yeah. Of course, as uh, mentioned earlier, there were a, a lot of uh, uh, looted stuff flying around yeah. as well. So yeah. people had them in their back uh, back room. Yeah. 
Very nice cover, Simon. I'm I'm jealous. <laughs> Very okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. If there's is no that, more questions. Is that uh, the last slide? Um, I add to it USA only. Is that a Hong Kong mark? Yes. Yes. Yeah, by USA. All right. Hmm. That's the scarcest of the Juska markings for Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I used oh, really? to have three the same to the States with that, that cache on. Yeah. yeah, I have one, but uh, whenever they come up, they, they come up once in a while, they go crazy on eBay. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I, have a, I have a few of these covers. They're only on registered covers. And I also have three um, that have by air to US only, only this one, and they also have the by air throughout. Wow. Okay. Oh. Uh, that doesn't make sense, but uh, it's a little bit weird. Not everything does. Um, oh, okay. Oh, oh, right, right. Uh, in fact, I remember I, I have a question on this cover. Um, for, for the transit or, or the second route, uh, from London to New York, uh, was it also on BOAC? Uh, not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I because I, 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 my information uh, is that BOAC was competing fiercely with, uh, with what was that, Pan Am during that period. Mm -hmm. But they can both operate the transatlantic route. Yes. I'm not sure, but my guess would be the BOAC. Yeah, yeah, that, that's also my guess as well. All right, and, okay. I, and I and I have I haven't yet mm -hmm. uh, been able to sort out in my mind what this by air to USA only means. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a little bit uh, yeah strange. And I'm not sure whether that that meant that it arrived in New York and then from New York onwards, it went by train or whatever. But um, if you, uh, in fact, I investigated that uh, because according to the postmark, it is uh, November 4th at New York and November 6th uh, at California. So uh, I suppose it should be by air. That could be train. That really? Could be trained. Could be trained. Two days enough. Well, oh, is it November fourth and sixth? Yes, just two days. Oh, okay, two days. No, that can't be trained. That has to be air. Yeah. Yeah. If it's four days or five days, it can be by train. But if it's two days, that has to be air. Yeah. But um, yeah, the only I the only ones I've seen with by air to USA only are all to USA. I've never seen one to a Caribbean island or a South mm -hmm. American destination or anywhere else. They're always just to the USA. So it doesn't seem to make sense, but uh, it's a bit of a mystery. I remember when I was studying the Juska markings, I, I, had, I have the McQueen book, which was the original reference for all the Juska markings all over the world. And he mentioned in there that there's only five or six known for this marking. In the meantime, I mean, that, that book was published, I don't know, in the 80s or 90s, so it's, it's a little bit dated. In the meantime, I've counted about three or four on eBay, and now Richard says he has three of them. I don't know if those are some that came from eBay, and you have this one, Simon. I'm guessing there might be 20 around, but uh, it's, it's a scarce marking, but we don't really know why they used it. Okay, good. Um, right, okay, yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Richard, you said you've got something to show? Oh, uh, yeah, if, if uh, okay, yeah, let me go. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is sort of like following on from uh, Simon, really. <laughs> uh, but I've got five covers here, by air to London and onward by surface, but before the war. So, 
Let's have a look. The first one is a registered letter Okay, can you all see that? Yep. So it's a registered letter, um, dollar, dollar 20 before the war, um, dollar 30 after the war. And so this one is a dollar 45. And it's the underneath, I mean, I won't bore you. Uh, you can read it all on, uh, on the YouTube thing or whatever. Um, but this one took 17 days to go via London and arrive in uh, Pennsylvania, which is quite quick. Eight, eight days by air and then only nine days by surface. So uh, the ship must have been uh, standing by or something in Southampton. So that's the first one. And then another registered one here, uh, 1939 now, and uh, this one took 20 days, and then the routing is shown there. I just had it, I couldn't think what to do today, so I just this morning I was, I thought, ah, oh, I'll just do, do this. Both of those don't show uh, any Giscard marking, which is quite normal for registered mail. Non-registered mail uh, used to have the AM, what I call AM5, which is the proud uh, name for these things, by Air to London only. And you can see that on this $1.20 cover in January 39. The other interesting thing about this cover is that it went on the service between Hong Kong and Penang that the Japanese decided to use as target practice um, from one of their cruisers. Uh, Delia was the first one off and she was hit uh, or, or, or had near misses uh, from uh, shots fired from a Japanese cruiser in Waitau Island, which is, and then having survived that, she then radioed the one behind, Denabella, uh, who avoided. So I'm not sure, both carried mail, so I'm not sure which one this cover went on. So the next one, I thought, uh, the branch post office with wow, dollar nice. price. And this is from Yamati, Yamade, sorry. Um, in 1938, $1.20. And on the back of this, it has the Kowloon and uh, GPO transits. Uh, a few things about this that are interesting. It's the it was the first Empire All Up mail from Hong Kong. Uh, that mail was about 440 kilos of mail carried uh, on the Delphinus. And then that connected up through Southampton. And it was also the first flight, it's a first flight cover, because this was the first flight that carried mail at the dollar 20. Wow, uh, that, that's interesting also, because it's the last day, it's the day before uh, the all up scheme was in effect. That's September right. First. That's right. Wow, that's a that's last right. day of a rate cover. Yeah, uh, but it's at the dollar twenty. The previous rate wasn't a dollar twenty or a dollar plus twenty. Uh, the other thing about this one is that um, I only know of uh, three covers at a dollar twenty from branch post offices. Um, I know of one from a famous man in Hong Kong. Uh, from Sai Ying Pun, and then there are two from Yao Ma Te, and they are the only ones that I know of. That's probably a reflection of how little I know. But, uh, the other Yao Ma Te one is here. Sorry about 
sorry about the non-exhibit condition. Um, but this one is January 39, and uh, it, it has no AM5 just go markings, and it went through the normal route by Delia through to London. So there you are. Very nice. Ever since you started asking about uh, branch post office airmail covers pre-war, I've been looking for them, Richard, and you were right. They are scarce. I mean, I... I don't have any in my collection. And it's, you know, wartime, you have some. Post-war, there's lots. But pre-war, it's just, you just can't find them. They're, they're, uh, they're tough to find, yes. The one to look for is Yudenlong. Yeah. I know of only one cover from Yudenlong airmail. Uh, before 1941. I don't know. Maybe the, I think the owner might be uh, uh, sharing with us now. Anyway, there we are. Okay. Thank you, Lovely. Yes, maybe we shall have um, a, a session on the branch office uh, in future, maybe next month, if... if uh, sure. And we like, I'm sure, Ingo has a lot of things to share, and so Sam has got things to share, and, uh, and probably Richard has, has, has lots of branch offices as well. I think it might be a good idea uh, for maybe for the, our December meeting. Yes, if if, if anybody had any I could, new I ideas, could, yeah, branch offices sounds very good. Mm, yeah, hasn't been I talked like about, hasn't been discussed for a long time. So there might be some new finds and things. For example, I can, yeah, I can I can uh, do a short presentation on Aberdeen Post Office if you like. Yeah, jolly good, jolly good. No, in fact, Simon was... knows. Simon knows about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Richard, so, yeah, has have done some research on the Aberdeen yes. Post Office. I was Richard, Richard, Richard. Yes. I was I was yes. actually uh, chatting to John Tang about the uh, Kowloon uh, KB. The, uh, the type A, the, the first uh, CDS, and uh, he he said that he has seen a thirty first of December. Uh, the, la the the date that Proud quoted was thirtieth December, being the last day of use. But he said mm. he has seen more than one covers on the thirty first of December. Hasn't shown me an example, but uh, oh, so really? you might, you might yeah. have to update your record. Well, well, well Andrew, in fact, um, uh, Lock Shilun SL Lock. Uh, as that example, and in fact, I've sent a copy of the image to, to Richard. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. What when you mean the thirtieth? Thirty first. Oh, thirty first, right? Thirty first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, when did you send that to me, Simon? Uh well, many months ago. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> lost it. Lost wow. in mail. When 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 I was when I was still write, writing the, the 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 article for the HKPS journal on 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 County branch. The type B's. Right. Yeah, the type B. But somehow we, 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 we came across it with the type A and then, uh, and oh. then uh, I mentioned to you that I have seen an example of the, the December 31st. And then yeah, you, you, want example, you want an image and then I, I emailed that to you. Oh, if, you could send, if you could send it again because my brain, my brain doesn't work so well okay. these days. Yeah. It, it, should, it should exist because the 31st of December 1901 uh, was a Tuesday. Yes. So I mean, if it's a Sunday, there's a there's a chance that it won't exist. But it's a, since it's Tuesday, so it should exist. Um, anyway, anyway, the yeah, the interesting thing about these type A's and type B's, which I haven't really checked thoroughly, but it's pretty obvious, is that the general post office had no control over the branch post offices. The reason I say that is that if you look at Western Branch, now Western Branch closed down for a while, of course, but the dates that Western Branch was using type A and type B is completely different 
from Kowloon branch post office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Completely. I know. That's, that's... E- e- even when you look at when people change months and days, yeah. completely different. Okay. Right. So uh, uh, we change the subject of uh, King George VI. We've got about nine minutes. Anybody got anything to say? Any? I have uh, a little presentation, yes, if why I not? may. Why not? Yeah. Go on. Go ahead. Okay. So I've got seven covers to show, uh, which are a, um, it's basically a rate study and it's just, there's, there's no serious sense to the study. It's just a descending order of high rates down to low rates uh, with interesting covers. So the first one is a uh, $24.50 rate which is uh, a seven times weight of the 350 per half ounce for Trans-Pacific route to Canada. Um, I do have higher rates than that. I have an $80 rate, except for it's not an actual cover. It's like a parcel tag and there's no address on it. So I didn't count that, but uh, it's nice because you got a pair of the $10 first issue on it. Very poor condition for this cover. Um, there's no censorship. It's not registered. It was examined by a censor. Um, I don't know if that was in Canada or the USA. I think it's Canada, but I'm not sure. The next one is um, a $16.80 rate, which is a 14 times weight. This is we're now back in 1939, and um, it's the $1.20 cent per half ounce rate uh, by Imperial Airways going to the USA. So it's 1680, that's 14 times the 120. And again, there's the $10 and $5 first issue stamps on there, which are always nice to get on cover. Moving downwards, I'm going right down to the all operate, the M- uh, the Empire Air Mail scheme, which started in September 1938 and um, this one is a little bit different because it's registered so it's the 15 cents plus 25 cents registration fee sent to Ireland in 1939. Then I have a double uh, all operate uh, sent to South Africa uh, in uh, again in 1939 to make uh, 30 cents and then the the best one of this series is not this one. This, this one is a good one. This is a, the single rate of all up going to Nyasa land. And it's, it's sent on the first day. I think this has philatelic overtones to it because it, it even says on the top of it, Empire all up air mail, first day cover, first flight. So um, I haven't studied the rooting of this, but it sounds like there's definitely some philatelic aspect to it. But Nyasa land, that's the only cover I have to that destination. So pretty happy to have that. And then this one, yeah, this is the goodie. This one, I have to thank Sam Chu for pointing it out to me because I bought this in a, in a lot of a whole bunch of other stuff. And when I saw this, I thought, ah, a postcard, wonderful, big deal. Well, it is a big deal. This is the all up postcard rate, which is 10 cents. Hmm. And uh, it was Sam who pointed out to me that he has never seen one. And I checked with Nick and with um, Duncan, and neither of them said they have one. So this is a pretty scarce uh, cover. Um, hmm. Obviously, hmm. at that time of world history, there weren't a lot of people doing a lot of postcard writing and traveling and all that. There, there was, but... Uh, for some reason, postcards from that era are, are scarce. And uh, I'm glad that I found this. And I'm very glad that Sam pointed out to me it's uh, scarcity. Maybe just maybe with the letter rate at five cent more, they might as well write a letter. <laughs> yeah, that makes that sense. For money. But yeah. that, I've never seen one before. So that's nice to see that postcard. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one is a zero rate. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure if it really was zero because there 
it's an official paid stamp on this. But this is a uh, thing I just recently acquired. We're now post-war, 1948. And this is a uh, parcel receipt, OHMS, going to uh, somebody in New Zealand. And what's interesting is why would parcel receipts be sent to individuals? Because normally these are post office to post office mail, as far as I know. They're like um, um, avis de reception, AR, uh, the same principle that once the thing has been delivered, you send a receipt back to the sender. But uh, anyways, it's got a lot of interesting markings. I checked all the markings and one of them predates the, yeah, the, um, the official paid predates what's in, um, in Proud. I, unfortunately, I, I don't have the thing in front of me to tell you by how much, but that's one thing. And the service de post, I was surprised that that was still in use, but that thing was in use uh, for quite a while still. So it's not, it's in period. Mm. And um, what also is interesting, I've seen yeah. some of these from eBay and other places and kept the images. You never get a registration label on them. They just have the yeah. R box marking, official registered. Mm. And that means you don't need a registration label, but on this one, they decided to slap one on. So it's a nice, interesting cover. And like I say, that brings the rate down to zero of this little rate show. Thank you very much. Yes, that's most interesting. So as it's come to uh, almost the end of our meeting, um, uh, well, it's nice to see all of you and uh, uh, maybe uh, we will have another meeting next month uh, on the you know, branch office if, 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 if you have uh, no objections to, to this idea. Yeah. Okay, so um, it's uh, goodbye for me and uh, uh, you know, good afternoon or good evening. And um, For me, it's goodbye yeah. from November the 13th. <laughs> I think oh, you're on the oh no, you're the third. No, you're still the twelfth, aren't you? Anna? Yes, I'm still at twelve. Yes, <laughs> I'm only eleven in eleven p.m. Yes. Anyway, that's uh, all right. That's all right. Nick, you, always, you always stayed up too late. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> good to see all you guys. Take yes, care. Yes, to see all you guys, and yes. Uh, nice to see everyone. Yes. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Yes. Thank bye -bye. you. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Nice evening. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.